Hello, my name is Antonio Caballero. I'm doing my presentation on communication. Where Miriam Webster's dictionary defines communication as a process in which information exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, and behavior. And communication, in my words, is exchange of feelings and information to others so that you are clearly understood. Whether it's actually talking to somebody, you know, sign language, or things like that. And also, all feelings are, need to be understood clearly. Uh, data shows that there's a 738-55 rule when you communicate. 7% of it's communication with words. 35 is through certain vocal elements, and 55 is through nonverbal such as facial, first facial expressions, job, posture, and gestures. Nonverbal communication is like waving, thumbs up, eye contact, facial expressions, body contact, you know, high five, pat on the back, a hug if they need some type of reassurance or they just need a hug to make sure that they're loved. Example of communication are within the family setting. It's family dinners, drive homes, date night with the spouse, father-daughter time, mother-father, any combination with their mothers, fathers, and their children. Also, any downtime you have with your kids. It all starts with the family. It all starts at home. I like to make sure that I communicate with my family, my kids, at home on the at the dinner table I always feel the dinner table always brings some type of conversation and also when you're married make sure that you have time with your spouse always stay engaged always stay connected somehow I know with me and my wife we always take one day out of the month to take a date night um, movie even if some time just to see how we're doing our careers, our children, our lives are so busy sometimes that we forget that forget that needs to be taken care of. So I make sure that is always taken care of and we always go out. Our kids. Um, anytime I have time to talk to them in the car or at home, make sure I talk to them. I stay engaged with them. And as you can see in this picture with the kid, and his dad, the kid and the dad are playing video games. They're doing they're sharing his interests, the child's interests. And make sure to talk to them every day. Be there pre, uh, be present for them every day. Always set the example. Always tell them how my day went and then I tell them how how it went, their school, work, and I was all and then I ask them how you know how'd your day go? We want to set the example on how to communicate. Make sure that we're always saying, hey, how's it going? Not just, oh, good, and that's it. No, I want more communication with my kids. In the coaching world, um, there's many ways to communicate. As you see this picture, next picture of the college football team holding up signs. You know, only those college players and the coaches know what is communicated with those four signs. You know, does it mean to line up left, right, running play, passing play? Some of the cards may not even make sense to the own team because, you know, it may be a dummy card. But everything there is to make sure to communicate and communicate clearly. And that's some nonverbal communication with them. An example, another example in coaching with communication, I like the critical encouragement sandwich. If a player is running a play and something happened, I need to talk to him. First, I go talk to that player and say, hey, well, you know, nice way to hit the hole, way to hit the hole fast. That's the encouragement part. And then if they took some steps wrong in that, I say, hey, you know what, you need to do a base step instead of a 45-degree angle step to get to that hole. 
and I tell them how to do that step. That's telling what they did wrong and tell them how to fix it. And the last part is giving more encouragement. You got this. You're going to do a great job next time. So they hear encouragement, what I did wrong, how to fix it, and then some more encouragement. You always want to encourage your, your players. That's what they're going to hear. You're going to hear encouragement first, encouragement last, and, of course, the coaching part of that going on with that. Um, my next slide is uh, Coach John Gruden, a big fan of Coach uh, John Gruden and the Raiders. It says, if you're a leader, you can communicate with a great work ethic. Those are things we're looking for. I look, at, I look for those things in my players as well, but also communication. I make sure my players are there to communicate with me, other coaches, and their teammates. They have to know what's going on in the field. I have leaders out there on the field at each position. I make sure they know their assignments and the next uh, player's assignments throughout the game. Direct quote from Teaching Character Through Sports from uh, Bruce Brown. Coaches who communicate well develop a, a level of trust with their athletes. I, th I think that's, that's key. You know, as long as you communicate and you're sincere with your players and they know you care, that's a, that's a great thing. So this trust allows them to dignify honest mistakes by sending the message. All right? Yes, you know, we're going to talk, you know what, you did this wrong, but we're there and we care for you and we want to do the best for you and we want you to succeed in all you do. Especially as coaches, we want our players to be the best they can. Next slide, it's a biblical quote. Um, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. So make sure that everything you tell your players, it's not going to hurt them. It's always going to build them up, giving them encouragement. But only such as, in, as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So make sure everything you say is building up the player in certain situations. Because, you know, if they did something horribly wrong, hey, you know, a nice try to say you fix it. You're going to do better next time. It's going to be great for the player. They know you care. And they know what they did wrong and how to fix it. Uh, in my conclusion, communication is the key to all relationships. Never stop communicating. I tell my players all the time, hey, you're going to communicate with the coaches, the players, your teammates, in the future, your spouse, your kids, your coworkers. You always have to communicate. As long as you communicate with people, People are know you're going to at least no, not stray them the wrong way. And they can always talk to you and hopefully they get a sincere, honest answer throughout all the, all the conversation that you are having. Um, that's the end of my presentation. Nonverbal communication. Goodbye. Thank you again. My name is Antonio Caballero. Thank you.